Okay, hi everyone, and welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. My name is Karen Shannon, and I'm part of the Code of Bears team. I'll be presenting Kinetic MES, which MES stands for Manufacturing Execution System, and Kinetic Epicor, showing you today an overview of cycle counting. Today we'll dive into more information about cycle counting in Kinetic MES and the setup needed in Kinetic Epicor. Physical and cycle counting in Epicor can help you keep more accurate inventory information. So the items listed here for setup, set up the ABC codes, calculate ABC process, and reason codes can be and probably should be set up ahead of time when you plan to do your cycle counting or physical inventory. The ABC hierarchy gives the path for each menu item in Epicor where ABC codes can be associated with parts. Inventory managers or whoever is responsible for inventory accuracy should do these setup items and verify things are set up as you want them before the daily slash weekly slash monthly or yearly counting of your inventory. This setup should be done in your test system so you can follow the flow and cancel change as needed before fine tuning the inventory process to move into your live system. These setup items and the additional ones on the next slide are not done in MES, but knowing the overview will help you understand the full process better. On this side, you can see the setup and processing needed for your counting of inventory. The cycle count period definition is required, a cycle count schedule needs to be maintained, and then count cycle maintenance has several items in the menu item, and cycle count tag entry is where the MES process actually will be worked on. And then your inventory person might do reports and posting for the cycle count. Most often you'll want to set these up closer to when you want to count inventory since you can only have the same part selected in any one open count schedule at one time. Then the business activity queries, BAQs, that can help you with your cycle counting are a part cycle selected and parts assigned ABCs. These can help you verify your you have your selected parts to count as you expected and to review the current status of your cycle counts and assigned ABC codes. Additional BAQs can be set up as needed to help with cycle count troubleshooting. So these setup items will need to be done in full Epicor, not in MES. Um, in general, the letter codes, which are ABC, and you could have others, you can use whatever letters you'd like to, are set up with a count frequency and stock value percent to relate to your inventory parts. The calculate ABC codes is a process tool that can be used to help assign ABC codes to your parts using different options, which can simulate a list of parts and assigned ABC codes. Or you can choose the option to update ABC codes once you have tweaked the ABC code maintenance and have reviewed the simulated results. And then also at least one reason code needs to be defined with the inventory reason type of inventory adjustment and the checked item for count discrepancy reason that's required for cycle counting or physical inventory counting. If you choose not to use the calculate ABC codes, you can also update the codes using either DMT, a data management tool, or a UBAQ, updatable business activity query, where you can just allow them to change just the um, ABC code on a part. So here is the first area where you can set up ABC codes. On this menu, it's for the part tracker you can use from MES to navigate to the site and warehouse details. And then you can use a cycle count ABC code and additional settings here. In the ABC hierarchy, if codes are set up at this level, in other words, at the part site warehouse cycle count level, these codes override any that are set at any other levels. So this is the most specific area to set up ABC codes. The next area in ABC hierarchy is the warehouse's cycle count ABC codes. And again, you can use the part tracker in MES and the card for activities in the part tracker. You can then see the warehouses for the part. And if you right click on the warehouse field, then you can open warehouse entry and get to the settings for the warehouse ABC codes here. You can see those set up again with the codes. And then um, if you have set them up, you might have count frequency and stock value percent there. Then navigating to um, the ABC codes card, you can view the cycle count ABC codes and additional settings that were set up for the warehouse. In the ABC hierarchy, if codes are set up in this level, these codes override any other levels except for the ones shown on the previous slide for the part site warehouse cycle count level. You can again use the part tracker and get to the site detail and the card for cycle count. 
here you can see the cycle count information for this level for the site on the part. And it doesn't show as much detail at this level, but in the ABC hierarchy, if codes are set up in this level, those codes override the site level and company level ABC codes. And again, notice you do not have all the ABC code settings available here at the park site cycle count. In this site configuration, which you can get to again by using the part tracker, you can right click on the site field and choose to open site configuration control. When the site menu opens, you can navigate to the inventory ABC codes and you can see again the count frequency and stock valuation setup specific for the site. <clears throat> In the ABC hierarchy of codes are set up at, at this level. These codes override the company level ABC codes, but the lower level ABC codes override these codes. And the last level is the ABC code maintenance. Um, again, you can use part tracker and you can right click on the ABC code itself and open with ABC code entry. And when this menu opens, you can view the cycle count ABC codes and the additional settings. You can see that we have count frequency and stock valuation percent and then other additional things for ABC code maintenance. If codes are set up in this level, these codes are only used if you do not have ABC codes assigned at the other levels already discussed, the more specific levels. So now the actual setup for it, when you're wanting to start either a cycle or a physical setup and processing, the first step will be defining your cycle count period definition. And those are set up before you get counting and usually the inventory manager will set these up in full Epicor. Periods can be defined based on how frequently you count your parts or the lowest value you would want to use for count frequency. For example, if your lowest count frequency is monthly, 30 slash 31 days, it makes sense to define my monthly cycle count periods. However, if there are some parts you want to count weekly or bi-weekly, you should define cycle count periods as weekly or bi-weekly. You create a new cycle count clicking the plus button here by entering a year, a description, and then the start date and the end date, and you do not enter anything in the period, Epicor will assign the cycle period once the cycle count period is saved. So after you have a period defined, you can start with um, cycle count schedule maintenance. And again, that's done before you get counting and usually the inventory manager will set these up in full Epicor. You use this menu to create and maintain cycle count schedules. Here you'll use the actions menu or its overflow menu in kinetic to select parts that will cycle will be cycle counted for a warehouse during the previously defined cycle period based on the selected production calendar so you select which warehouse you select your cycle period and your production calendar and then you, you do that by creating a new schedule first and then it has those boxes open and then you can select any of these um, check boxes that you want to use before you use the part selection option. Again, as mentioned, you, that will show up in the overflow that you can say to select the parts. Then um, the inventory manager would do these last steps that are before the actual cycle counting and most often do them in full Epicor. So select your cycle count schedule and use the actions overflow to generate tags. So the other options aren't available. You can see print tags is not available until actually the tags are generated. So you have to generate the tags and you can choose to generate either blank tags or blank PCID tags there. And you can choose options regarding whether you're going to include non-edible bins, et cetera, and how you're going to sort your tags. Once you generate them, tag numbers will be generated for all the parts that were previously assigned to the cycle or physical inventory using the perform part selection option. And you have to generate the tags before you can start the counting of tags. Next, your inventory manager would use the actions or overflow menu to print tags and you can print count or blank tag records for a specific cycle in a warehouse. The tag numbers will be printed for all parts that were previously assigned to the cycle sequence using the perform part selection option. Finally, your inventory manager will use the actions overflow starts count sequence and that will be used in preparation for actual counting of your parts or PCIDs if you use PCIDs selected for a specified cycle sequence. So here we finally get to MES and the heart of count tag entry. On the data collection screen and the material tab, you can click the button for count entry. That will bring up any open cycle count schedules. And here we can see a couple of them are open and you click on which one you want to start your count tag entry on. Once you do that, that will bring up this third um, window, which 
will list all your account tags. In this case, we only had one in this particular cycle count sequence. Your open tags can be updated and blank tags can be added only until the cycle sequence has been posted. So each part will be listed with the tag number that's assigned and you will need to enter a counted quantity, the counted by, and the date counted. If you set up the specific order needed, you could also paste insert from Excel. Save your count tag entries when you're finished. So click the save button there. Intermittently or when you are done entering all count tags, the inventory management can then run reports and post the transactions. And that's done again in the cycle, count cycle maintenance in the overflow menu. There are different reports that can be run and these are the two most common reports. And then, um, and then there's another one there and you can post your counts. And that would normally again be done by your inventory manager. <clears throat> After posting the part transaction history will show any changes made, inventory changes made from the count tag entry. So here we show a couple of examples of business activity queries that might help you out with troubleshooting. Again, the inventory manager can create these business, business activity queries or can ask an IT person to create them to help troubleshoot the physical or cycle count process. Since a part can only be assigned to one cycle at a time, the first BAQ named part, part cycle selected can be created to show you what parts are already committed to a cycle count. The second BAQ named parts assigned ABCs can be used to review the ABC codes already assigned to parts and or made into an updatable BAQ to have the option to update the ABC code. So thank you everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day and get counting.